haven't had time in between my last three major relationships and those span over what seven years I hadn't been single in seven years I never actually sat down and did the math I have to yell, I do too much, I like her, it's talking about the way music, art, and stuff. <laughs>this video is to my younger self. I am not a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a therapist, or a counselor. But you know what I am? I'm an adult. And I have some hindsight. And this is a video to warn my younger self. This is what I would say. And if you hear yourself in my story, and if this helps you, that's wonderful. Hello! I'm Danielle and welcome to Tuesday Talks, formerly known as 20 Talks Series. For those of you who are new, or those of you who don't know, this is actually a series on the channel and there's an entire playlist chock full of talks like this. So I hope that you'll check it out and get caught up. Last week we talked about toxic relationships and how, at least in my case, how it affected me and my life during and after the relationship. If you haven't seen it, it's one of the more powerful talks I've had on the channel and I would encourage you to check it out. Now today's video is about the year-long dating hiatus I went on in 2018-19. I started dating when I was a teenager and I was pretty, pretty love crazy. Um, uh, dating was a really large part of my mind. Uh, it was a major focus of my life um, because until then um, I grew up quite sheltered and that has lent itself to me in more ways than I knew. <laughs> um, but once I did start dating uh, I became very quickly obsessed with it because it was one of the things I hadn't experienced in life at all and had pined after for years. You know, um, I'm from the US and a lot of our media is very um, love and lust focused and uh, I couldn't wait to figure out what having a significant other was even like about. So before then I had built up a ton of skills, ton of hobbies, um, I had quite a robust and um, varied personality and interests to match um, and so yeah, those got put on the back burner when it was dating time. So, entering the dating field was like... A whole new world! A dazzling place I never knew! And when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear that I don't know what I'm doing! A whole new world! But I will tell you, it was fun to figure it out. <laughs> and during this time in adolescence and approaching adulthood, I was really figuring out what dating even was and how it interacted with me and how I was as a girlfriend and how my significant others were as a person in my life. And that was okay during that time. I was just figuring out who I am in that arena, which is, in my life, a completely different role. I am a friend, I am a daughter, I am a sister, I am a cousin, I am a niece, but I have never been a girlfriend. And for such an emphasized role in my culture, it, it was very enthralling. It was I was infatuated with infatuation. And so that process for me was so tantalizing, so invigorating, and so enthralling, like all of all of the adjectives, all of the gerunds. <laughs> but there is a reason I took a year off dating. That's because things changed. Approaching adulthood, I had no sense of 
what I wanted still. Uh, I entered the dating field and my dating self as a person who was curious, a person who wanted to experiment, a person figuring themselves out. And at some point, I needed to not do that, but to date with a purpose. And I failed to realize that, I failed to recognize that, and I failed to enact a plan to bring purpose into that part of my life. And that's where everything started going wrong. I realized, and I had always wanted what I referred to as a real partner, um, that meaning a person who isn't just like a flimsy, oh, I'm dating this person, or oh, we go on dates, because I thought that dating was boyfriend, girlfriend. Apparently, apparently my generation, my pool of people completely <laughs> disagrees with that. Ooh. I came to the realization that what I wanted all along was a serious, committed, monogamous relationship. That is my speed. That's not everybody's speed, but that's my speed. And that's the only speed I need to cruise at. <laughs> I wanted this thing. I wanted a commitment. I wanted one person. That's it. But I didn't change how I was dating. And these things, these things sparked fire and laid waste to my life. Let's get into that. I wanted this one type of relationship, but I didn't know anything else. I didn't know how I wanted my partner to treat me. I didn't know how I wanted my partner to communicate with me. I didn't know my love languages. I didn't know what it looked like to be respected by someone and how I feel respected, how I communicate with someone, what I need, what I will not tolerate, what I will tolerate, warning signs, red flags. I didn't know all of this stuff. I had not used dating. I did not look internally to ask myself these questions. So I didn't know what I want. <laughs> I knew what my end goal was, but I didn't know what I wanted, which is, which seems like a Jedi mind trick, to be honest. When a person enters a relationship without a sense of purpose, they will more than likely lose themselves in the relationship. And a person without a sense of purpose has no sense of self. And with no sense of self, there is no foundation. And with no foundation, a relationship cannot be strong. So if a person is trying to figure out what they want by dating you, and you already know what you want, get out of there. I'm watching my own memories back, and I feel like I'm watching a horror movie. Get out of there, girl! They're gonna waste your time for years! Years! If you saw last week's video, which I highly recommend, it'll give you a lot of understanding of um, how I came to this place. Before I had a chance to really regain my footing and really uh, make that commitment to myself, I was still grieving the relationship, as I said. Um, how do I say this? Uh, have you ever been bamboozled into a relationship? Has that ever happened to you? Is it just me? Because this is another video in and of itself. I am not ready to talk about it. <laughs> I was not intending to enter a relationship. Uh, this was a person I trusted and knew long term. And I had no idea um, that they felt the way that they thought they felt about me. And I was so vulnerable and I was so lonely and sad um, that I made a bad decision. And I entered a relationship with this person. That person... Uh, rather, the relationship that followed, um, 
broke all my trust in humanity. I lost two dear friends um, in this relationship. And I gained an enemy. Imagine that. Like, three for the price of one? Like, dang! <laughs> what a... What a mess. What an absolute catastrophe. Worst case scenario. So after that, that's when I made the commitment to myself because I was wrecked, wrecked over this. Then I committed to myself I was going to be off for a year. I'm giving myself a year break. I've been dating for a long time, been a serial monogamist for quite some time. I haven't had time in between my last three major relationships and those span over what seven years i hadn't been single in seven ye i took all the energy i had been putting into these relationships the calling the texting the emotional support the going out to events the planning dates the fighting the figuring things out, the learning of a new love language, the putting someone else's feelings before my own, trying to be understanding, working really hard to build something with someone, trying to figure out what someone was passionate about, giving too much of myself. I was giving too much. All of that energy back into myself. I dated me. I was my significant other. Me. <laughs> I reconnected with my own emotions. I was given the tools through therapy to figure out what I was even feeling. I repressed them so hard for five straight years. I forgot what I even felt. <laughs> what? And you know what happened while I did that? I blossomed. That's when I actually started to upload more here. <laughs> And look what happens when I put my full energy into something. Yay! In the comments, do you guys want an in-depth video on how I rebuilt my sense of self and my ability to trust others? Because I lost all of that and I had to build it from scratch. And it's really hard as an adult. It's very, very hard as an adult. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, tell me about that and while you're down there, you might as well subscribe. I upload every Tuesdays things like this and hair stuff on Saturdays. Imagine if you had a friend like this and this is how you treated that friend. I didn't ask her how she felt. I didn't check in with her. I didn't consult with her what she wanted. I didn't consult to see if she was okay. I never gave her any downtime to really heal. I didn't put any of my effort or my energy into making her life better. I didn't consult with anyone on how they think I should be better to her. I let her go along with any old relationship just because I knew she didn't want to be single, because there was some horrible thing that would happen if she was single. Why did I let her think that? Worst of all, I didn't acknowledge her trauma at all. I didn't even ask her if she was okay. So I took a whole year to reverse that. <laughs> at the end of my dating hiatus, I looked at who I had become and who I had rebuilt myself to be, who I wanted to be, what I wanted, and how quickly I was achieving those things that I want. I was truly happy by myself for the first time since I was a child. And as sad as it is to say that out loud and really mean it, I am so proud of myself for doing this for myself. And I sat, and I looked, I looked at my goals, I looked at how I was proceeding, I looked at what I wanted to do with my life. And I decided, under the pressure of no one, that I saw room in my life for another person. 
I am strong. I know who I am. I know what I want. I literally wrote a list. I wrote a list of what I want in another person. Just in case my little infatuation made a little return on me. Okay? Because I'm not going to sit here and tell you it wasn't a long year. Very long year. A long, sometimes lonely year. Made myself a little list of who and what I expected and wanted and would tolerate and would not tolerate. And red flags. I literally wrote down red flags. <laughs> it's like, if they show me this, then I need to run. I'm not kidding. And I did run. When I went back into the dating field, when I re-entered the dating field. <laughs> Do you want a video on that? When I tell you it was a completely different experience and I had a lot more fun than I ever had. Let me know. But that is what happened. I had a lot more fun. I had a strong sense of self and I was happy. Thank you so much for watching. I upload Tuesday Talks on Tuesdays. Very similar to this content. Let me know what you want me to talk about in the future. I also upload hair videos, Star Puppy vs. Something Saturdays. <laughs> and I would hope that since it's free and you know what to expect from me, you'll subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications so you never miss an upload and you can claim first. Again, not a therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, or counselor. But if you want to share this with your friend who you think could hear it and maybe take a little something from it, by all means, please do. So thank you so much for watching. This has been me, Danielle, your resident weirdo, Star Puppy, signing off. Say it with me now, Star Puppy, away! Don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video.